So I just wanted to show you everything you needed to make the complete project, even though this first video is only showing us how to make the blanket part of the lovely blanket. Um, I wanted you to have everything in stock that you needed for when we come to do the bunny head video. So everything you need is here. So you need some toy stuffing to fill the bunny head with. You're going to need some pink cotton yarn. I've got this sheepies katona in light pink. That's to do the bobble trim of our hexagon blanket. The main um, yarn that I'm using throughout is this Rico Rumi double knit cotton in white. These are 25 gram balls. You're going to need three of them. So 75 grams of double knit cotton. Whichever one you choose is going to be enough. I've got some black embroidery cotton here just to pop a couple of eyelashes onto my bunny rabbit at the end. I've got a three and a half millimeter hook that's to do the blanket with. I've got a two and a half millimeter hook to do the bunny head with. A pair of scissors, a roll counter. You're gonna you, you're gonna need something to keep track of your rounds especially when it comes to doing the bunny head and ears if you've not got one of these just use a piece of paper and keep a tally but you're going to need want to make a note of where you're up to in this i've got a pair of safety eyes and a safety nose for the bunny's face um, and they're just you pop them into your work of the head and then the washer goes on the back side of your work and it keeps them securely there and um, i'll show you the set i've got actually so this is the set I've got. Now you don't need to order anything this big if you're not going to be using very many. You can order small packs of them each. But just so you know, you're going to need two 5mm eyes and one 12mm pink nose. Okay, so two 5mm eyes and one 12mm nose per bunny. You're going to need a stitch marker, especially if you're new to crochet. Um, if you're not, not so much for the blanket, but mainly for the bunny head so you can keep track of where you're up to in your round. And you're going to need a darning needle to tie in loose ends and just do a bit of detail work on the bunny's head. Okay, so let's move all these out of the way and I'll show you how we get started on the blanket part of um, the, this lovely blanket. So you want to take your white yarn and your three and a half millimetre hook. You can use a, th a thicker yarn if you want. I just think that these look, this is a really nice um, cotton to use for a little security blanket. It's really soft this. I've always used sheepies to be honest and then in lockdown I couldn't get any of the sheepies white. So I tried this Rico Rumi and I really like it. So to begin with what you need to do is we want to make our magic ring. So take your, your white cotton, loose end dangling down towards your pinky and hold it there with your thumb. And to yarn over your fingers and create that um, X shape and bring it back up. And just hold it there, flip your hand over and you should have your parallel lines. Pop your hook underneath this first one, pull through the back loop. Twist your hook upwards, hook back on this, this back loop and pull down and that forms your knot. So you want your loose end of your magic ring working towards the left of you. So you want to just pull on that. Sorry, I'm not in focus. So you want to just pull on that until your magic ring is a nice size for you to work around. So into this magic ring, we're going to be popping um sorry, oh I got I got into myself in a twist then. You want to be popping two treble crochets and then chain two, and we need to do that six times. <clears throat> So for the first treble crochet, normally to get the height of a treble crochet we chain three, but because I've got this knot here from my magic ring, I'm just going to chain two, and that's going to count as my first treble crochet. So to get my second one, 
just going to hold my magic ring there. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into my magic ring, making sure that it's going underneath both my loose end and the magic ring. Yarn over and pull up a loop, three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through the last two. So that's my second treble crochet. Then you need to chain two, and think of these chain twos as the corners that make the hexagon blanket. And back into the magic ring, you're placing another two treble crochets, or in the US, these are double crochets. And if you're a little bit unsure how to do this stitch, I have got a tutorial on that as well. Two, and then I chain another two. And then I pop another two treble crochets into my magic ring. I'm going to do this in total six times. So that's three of them done. Chain two. And then another two trebles into my magic ring and around that loose end. One. Two. Chain two, one, two, and then two more trebles, one, two, so we've got five sets of two now, so we just need one more set of two, so chain two, and then work your last two trebles around that magic ring. And then to join this round, you're gonna chain two here at the end and slip stitch just into the top of your, your chain two space. So one, two, it's just here. Can you see that? Don't forget your stitch markers if you're pretty new to crochet, it'll make it easier for you. And then what you want to do once you've slip stitched is just pull your loose end of yarn on your magic ring, pulling that tight, and that's our foundation there. So what you want to do next is three chains, and that counts as your first treble in this row. And then in the next treble crochet across, you want to yarn over, insert your hook, and place a treble there. So you're going underneath both the V's to that stitch and make a treble. That brings us to our chain space. Now every time you hit a chain space in this project, you're going to do exactly the same thing. So you want to make a treble into this. So yarn over, insert your hook into the space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And then to get us onto the next side of our hexagon, you're going to chain two. And then you're going to place one more treble into that space again. So every time you come to the chain two gap, you're going to do a treble, chain two and a treble. That brings us back onto our next side. So we've got two trebles here that we need to work into. So our first, top of our first one is here, top of our second one is here. So I'm going to work one treble into each of those. One. And two. And then that brings me to a chain two space. So I'm going to need to work a treble. Chain two and then work a treble back into that same space. And so now I'm onto my side stitches, so I need to place a treble into the top of both of these stitches. So yarn over and insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through your last two, into my second one, And that brings me back to my next chain two space. So we're going to pop a treble, chain two, and then place another treble in directly into that chain two space. And then you need a treble crochet into the top 
of each of your next two stitches. So that's one and two. So I'm back at my chain two space, so I need to pop a treble. Chain two to go around the corner and another treble. Treble crochet in the top of each of these stitches. One, two, and then I'm back to my chain two space. So I'm gonna place a treble chain two and then another treble so then we've got to place a treble into the top of these next two stitches one and two so that brings me to my next chain two space so I'm going to do exactly the same here and this is how we're going to finish off each of the rounds. One, chain two, one, two and then our second treble goes into there. So then to join it, you don't do any more chains here at this point, you just go directly into the top of your chain three stitch and slip stitch just to join. So you can see now that you've got four stitches on each of your sides. One, two, three, four. These are going to increase by two every time that we do a round. So you want to, for your next round, I'll do this next round with you and then I'll let you carry on with it because it's a repetitive pattern. So once we've done round three, it's exactly the same. It's just that the number of stitches on your side is going to increase by two each time. And I do mine until I've got 30 trebles on each side and then that's where I stop so you want to chain three one two three that counts as a treble then into your next stitch along so we're working into here you're going to place another treble and then into your next stitch along another treble And that brings us to our chain two space. So we want to always the same here, no matter what round you're on, a treble, chain two, followed by another treble all into that same space. So I've got four stitches now that I need to work along the top of. So I'm gonna place one treble into each of those. One. two three and four and then that brings me to my chain two space just get a bit more yarn so into my chain two space exactly the same one treble chain two and one treble And that brings me back along to my next side. So I need to place one treble into the top of each of these four trebles. So you're yarning over, insert your hook, pull up, pop one in each of those. That's two, three, And four, so that brings me again back to my chain space. So I'm going to pop a treble, chain two, and 
my second treble into that space and then one treble into each of the stitches along so one two so four on this round your next round will be six and then eight ten as you go along three and I'll just show you so that's my last one oops it is easy that's my last one and that brings me to my chain two so I'm going to pop a treble chain two and pop my second treble back into that space then I'm going to work my next four along the top of the trebles from the previous round one two three and four I'm at my chain space so I'm going to do a treble chain two and then another treble and then one treble crochet into the top of each of the trebles from the previous round one two three and four so then what I need to do here just to finish off this round and you're going to do it exactly the same in every round which is why I'm not going to do every round with you so you want to again we're at the chain two so you're going to place a treble chain two and then what you want to do is place another treble this second treble is the first treble in this side so you can see each of this size the size to this row have six trebles but because we started this one sort of midway through it we've got one two three four five so to complete this round you just need to pop one treble here into this very first treble from your previous round And then all you do is slip stitch it to the top of your chain three. So insert your hook into the top of your chain three, yarn over, pull through and pull through. And then you just continue. So I'll do another chain three here and carry on working my way around exactly the same. And I do it until each side has 30 stitches in it in total. So 30 stitches across here, 30 across here, 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 and my last one here. So I'll meet you back when you're up to 30 stitches and I'll show you how I do my little bobble edging on it. Okie dokie. Okay, so I finished the base of my blanket, my blanket. Um, and what you want to do is... When you get to the end, you'll just slip stitch and do a knot exactly how we have done in all the other projects. When you lie it flat, you want the loose end of your magic ring to be facing on the table, on your workspace. So this is your top side of your work. This is your front of your work. That's quite important. If you, if you do these bobbles on the wrong side, it's going to look... It's not going to look as pretty. It's going to ruin it a little bit. So make sure when you start this, lay your blankie down so that your loose ends are on the underneath of it. it, it I used two of the little balls of 25 for this and then I've got my third one left for the bunny head. So I've chosen this light pink colour to do my bobble stitch in. So what I need to do is do a slip knot. And just secure that onto my hook and you want to start just after your chain two space into this very first top of this very first treble crochet and this round repeat is um, 
a repeat of four stitches. So we're going to have three double crochets and then in the fourth stitch along we're going to make work the bubble bobble. So we're going to have one double crochet in three stitches and then the fourth stitch along we're going to slip stitch and I'll show you how to work the bobble. It's exactly the same as we worked the bobble in the hat, we're just doing it a little bit differently because this is an edging. So I've got my hook placed into my first stitch so I'm just going to slip stitch and work my first double crochet back into that same space where I've just attached my yarn. Again, if you're a little bit unsure on how to double crochet or single crochet, I have got a video for you, but I'll show you as well. So that's our first one, so we need three more. So moving on to my next, sorry, two more. So moving on to my next stitch, I just insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. So I've got two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through both of those. And that is how you do a double crochet. So I need one more, so again I'm going to yarn up, insert my hook and yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through two. So my next one is where we're going to be working the bobble, so it's my fourth stitch along. So I need to just slip stitch into this, fourth one, and then chain two. And where we're going to be working the bobble is the base of this chain two, so right into here. So the way we make our bobble is yarn over, insert your hook into the base, into the first chain on the base and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over again and go directly back into that same very first chain, yarn over, pull up another loop. Yarn over and take off just your first two. And again, yarn over, insert your hook back into that chain space, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through your first two. And again, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So I've got five loops on my hook, I just need one more. You should always have, when you've done this five times, you'll always have six loops on your hook and that's what you want. So there's my six loops on my hook now. So I just yarn over and pull through all six of those and you'll see that the it just magically turns in on itself and forms this gorgeous bobble. So the next three stitches along, I want to place one double crochet into each of those. One, two, and three. So my fourth stitch is my bobble. So I'm going to slip stitch into that space, chain two and work my next bobble here at the base of my, exactly like we did our first one. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the very first chain of the two, yarn over and take off my first two loops, yarn over, insert my hook back into that first chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And again, yarn over back into that same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through again, taking two off. So I've got four loops on my hook now, so I know I need to do another two. You always have one more loop on your hook than stitches you've actually done, just in case you ever lose count. So when I've got six on there, I know I've done five. Okay, so I've got my six loops, so I can yarn over and pull through all six. So then my next three stitches, each one will get one double crochet or single crochet if you're one of my American friends. 
and let me just show you why it's important that your work's facing the, the correct way so let me pull this up so here you can see you can't see um, really the stitch in the bobble but on the back side it looks you can see there where we've worked it where it's curled up on itself but from the front you, it's not as noticeable so it's worth making sure that you've got your work the right way so your loose ends should be on the surface that you're working at and your front side of your work facing up okay so I've got my three double crochets so my fourth stitch along now is a slip stitch chain two and then I'm going to work my next double my next bobble into that very first chain and I just want to show you um, how what we do when we come to the chain two space and if you follow the pattern you'll always hit the chain two with exactly the same um, repeat so I only need to show you the once and then I'll, I'll meet you back when we're at the end and I'll show you how to tie it off and finish it so I've got my five loops so I need one more So I've got six loops now, yarn over, pull through them all and then one double crochet into my next three stitches, one, two, three, slip stitch into my fourth, chain two, I'll show you again how we make the bobble. You want to yarn over, insert your hook into the base of this chain, this first chain that you've done. Yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook. Yarn over and take off your first two. Leaves you with two loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert your hook back into that first chain, exactly the same space. Yarn over, pull through another loop. Yarn over and pull through your first two loops. Now you've got three loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same chain space. Yarn over, pull up another loop. Yarn over and pull through your first two loops. And now you've got four loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, take off your first two loops. Now you've got five loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and take off your first two loops and now you've got six loops on your hook. So there you know you've got your five stitches when you've got six loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all six. So my next three stitches, one double crochet in each. One. two, three and then into my fourth a slip stitch, chain two and work my bobble stitch. I think it looks so pretty the edge into this blanket and you can do it in whatever colour you like. Um, You can, it even looks nice just in the white if, if you don't know the sex of the baby you're doing it for, it still looks just as beautiful. I've got a little baby girl in mind with this one though. So the next three stitches, one double in each one. Then my fourth one along, I'm going to slip stitch. I know this is really repetitive for you if you're not new to crochet, but I just want to show people who um, are perhaps a little bit newer to crochet how I get round my chain two space. Three. 
four and five and I'm hoping that the bunny head I'm going to get a chance to film that tomorrow and upload it so make sure you've hit the bell so you don't miss it one two three slip stitch into my fourth chain two and form a bubble now if you are a little bit confused on the bubble the hat video um, uses a thicker yarn um, so that might be a little bit easier for you to see I'll just rewind it a little bit and have a little practice it can be a little bit tricky when you're using finer yarns like this but it does look so pretty when it's done so there's my six loops yarn over take them all off and then you can see I'm approaching my chain two space so what I need to do is I still need to do my three doubles but I've got two treble crochets left so my first two doubles go as normal into the top of each of those trebles and then I place one double here just by going under I don't go through the stitch I just go around it and place a double there and then I do a slip stitch in the same chain two space chain two and work my bubble stitch here one two three four and five and what you'll notice when you do that how we started at the beginning on our first set of three we've come to the top of our next row so every every side around will be exactly like that and it looks so cute so I'm just going to work my double there just to secure my bubble down so then I'm going to do another two doubles bobble then one double in the next three and then a bobble one double in the next three and a bobble and so on and so on and I'll meet you back when I get to here and I'll just show you how I tie everything off and finish it all off but it's looking cute I'll see you shortly okay so I'm right back at my last set of four stitches so I just wanted to show you how I finish it off and how I tie it off and then I'm going to give you a little sneaky look at the rabbit the bunny rabbit head that we're going to be making so I've got two trebles here that I need to make a double crochet into each one one and two and then that brings me to my chain two so I put one double crochet just as we've done all the way around and then I slip stitch chain two and wait work my very last bobble so it's one two three four five and then a yarn over and pull through all of those loops and just to bring me back down to this stitch I am just going to slip stitch it and then to finish off my edging I'm going to slip stitch into my very first treble crochet 
chain one take my scissors and snip off a good three or four inches for me to tie in pull up on that loop and just pull it to secure it and then I'm going to just weave in these couple of looser ends that I've got but how gorgeous is that so pretty and this tomorrow I am going to be making with you one of these to pop on top so it makes it a little bunny rabbit now because I've used what I've been thinking so it looks like it'll look a little bit like this when we're finished and it's so cute um what I've been thinking because I've been using this pink yarn I may just show you how if you haven't got one of these we can um create it out of the pink yarn as well but if you have got one of these then all the better it's so much easier but if not if you've not got one but you've got the eyes we'll um stitch it onto the bunny that we do tomorrow but if you have got them go ahead whichever one you want it's see when we're doing it in the pink it's quite nice sometimes to match the same pink up with the nose but if this was blue or yellow or grey um, then you definitely want to use one of these plastic noses because it, it just wouldn't look right but I think she is going to be beautiful and these are going to be my Lady Tilly Bunny Lovey Blankets okay so I'll see you tomorrow and we'll make the bunny bye